Hello, my name is Veronica and uh, I am from Punkfish Diving and Punkfish Academy. We do a lot of decompression theory and this is why I want to add something to the video about the gradient factor low. Why that? Because gradient factor low, I think, is the factor that is most discussed in the diving community and that is kind of most difficult to know or most difficult to decide which one is the one we want to use. It's not that simple. We've seen that with gradient factor high, we can be pretty sure that when we come out of the water with a lower gradient factor high, when we did never reach a very high supersaturation throughout the dive, we come out of the water pretty safe, but we cannot say something similar about gradient factor low. Why this? Let's see. Most of you might have seen this uh, little graphic before. This is our tissue saturation and desaturation graph, which is a little bit uh, strange compared with other graphic uh, presentations, but it's one that works really fine to represent one tissue. We have here one half, which is the part of saturation. We have the ambient pressure getting higher and we have the tissue gas get pressure getting higher on this axis. So usually while we dive, while we are at depth, we are submitted to a higher ambient pressure and our tissue saturates just until it reaches saturation. This line, the gray line in the middle that divides the field, is the point of saturation at a given pressure. The ambient pressure and the tissue gas pressure is just the same. And then we have this part, which is the ascent part, and which is all we are talking about in decompression theory, which is how we get back to the surface in the safest and most efficient possible way. So here on this, I did just put in the gradient factor low at 40%. We have, we reach 40% of the M value of the M line when we want to do our first stop and I did put as an example, just as an example, I don't say this is a good pair. I just use this as a very random example. I do not dive this pair, okay? Um, but I did set the gradient factor high as an example to 80 means, okay, we are willing to come out of the water with 80% of the M value. So if in this, we want to see our ascent. We have a tissue, just some random tissue. At the beginning of the ascent, this will be one of the faster tissues or even the fastest. And when we start our ascent, once we cross, we, we are saturated to a certain point, we start to ascend. And once we are at a shallower depth, at a lower ambient pressure than the pressure than the pressure in our tissues, which is this point, then we slowly start to desaturate. And we will now ascend, so go move towards a lower ambient pressure until we reach this 40% line, the 40% of the gradient factor low. And this is the moment where we have to stop and wait and ascend again a little bit and stop and wait and ascend again a little bit until we reach the surface without crossing this adjusted M line, which is the line with, uh, that is constituted from our gradient factor low or the gradient factor high. Um, now, this looks smart and nice and easy. We just stay under this line and everything is fine and uh, let's get out of the water. But what we see here is only one tissue. The model calculates with uh, 16 tissues and our body is like uh, 
a source of infinite tissues and is not really that easy to uh, uh, to to calculate. It's more than one tissue, um, and there are more things going on. So when we have 16 tissues, what happens while we desaturate one of them? When we start our ascent, the fastest tissues are the ones that are most saturated. And now we ascend and these fastest tissues start to desaturate. But we have medium tissues and even slow tissues that take a much, much longer time to saturate. And then later as well, they take a lot more time to desaturate. So while we do our first stop because our first leading tissues on the initial ascent hits the M line, the adjusted M line that we did set. There are more and more slower and intermediate tissues. I, I did just put one example here. There can be another tissue that's just far away from this saturation and when we ascend with this tissue and stop at the same point, at this stop, the slower tissue will still saturate. So at the end of the dive, we will have to desaturate this tissue as well. And all these tissues that are in between here and that did still saturate while we did our first deepest stops. Um, so we do not calculate our ascent for just one tissue. While on the initial ascent, like on the first meters, one of the faster tissues will be our leading tissue. These faster tissues are already desaturated enough later in our ascent because they can tolerate quite a high overpressure and they would be fine to reach the surface already. But then it's our medium tissues. Normally we do not reach more than the medium tissues on like recreational and uh, kind of easy technical dives. Um, and we still need to build in time to desaturate this medium tissues. So this is exactly the point of a lot of discussions. Gradient factor low is the most discussed part of gradient factors because what we want to find is this nice sweet spot where we do our stops early enough that bubbles did not yet form, but where we do not oversaturate too many other tissues in a too big way and that we can still get out of the water in some moment because we want to get out of the water and end the dive in some moment. So um, we cannot really say where this spot is. What we can say is that there is a too low for gradient factor low and setting it lower does not make your dive more conservative. It makes you accumulate more nitrogen throughout the dive because you're slower, like the medium tissues are still saturating when you do your first stops. And you have to take this into account and either have a much longer decompression and stay longer at a shallower depth to decompress the, these tissues as well, or you accept a higher risk because at the end of the dive, you come out with a higher saturation than you could ha have reached in the same time with a higher gradient factor low. So no one will be able to tell you actually which gradient factors to choose, but I think there's one thing we can say, and this is that the gradient factor low should not be too far away from the gradient factor high. There were times when it was like uh, when the deep stops were very like uh, 
um, knew and everyone thought deep stops were something good to do and something very important when people did play with uh, settings like uh, 1090. And this is something which I would say is not something anyone would use anymore today. Um, but which relation between the two gradients is the best? This is something no one can really tell you. And I know what I use for what reasons, but um, I have no idea what would be get best for you. So just make an educated guess. This is something we cannot do anything else than just guessing and have fun underwater. Don't forget, we do it for fun by the end of the day.